Hello investors, thank you for joining me. My name is Michael from Deep Value Returns on Seeking Alpha. Today I want to talk about the Trade Desk. The Trade Desk reported its Q3 results and the stock soared 30%. So I'm going to go through what investors should be thinking about, talk about its guidance, I'm going to talk about how it operates in this cookieless world and we're going to talk about CTV, that's the big news item. So yeah, I'm going to just jump right in if you don't mind. Uh, one of the things that's quite interesting is that going into this whole earning seasons, man, I felt that uh, it was going to be all the same, right? That ad tech companies were all reporting uh, a snap, digital turbine, magnite, everything that was uh, reporting anything to do with either ad tech or generally the kind of overarching theme of privacy, how it was operating uh, in, in how, the, how companies were operating via the iOS changes. It was all the same theme, right? So the stocks were all just plummeting. The trade desk came out and the stock soared. So everyone was kind of primed for bad news. So anything that would cause gonna come out that was not bad news, the stock was well positioned to, to just go up. And last month I actually said that, um, uh, I said that the stock right now was pricing in a lot of pessimism and that paying 21 times forward sales isn't the bargain basement, but the high quality companies such as the traders simply don't go on sale for too long. I did not, to be clear, expect that it would jump 30% on the back of these results, but I did feel that the odds were favorable for investors. So, uh, yeah, so as I said, you know, it's quite exciting to see. Um, the big thing was that the guidance for next quarter, they're pointing towards at least 22% year over year growth. But remember the Q4 last year, they had the political spend that accounts for approximately eight or 9% of their revenues last quarter of last year. So in that line of vision, they were kind of guiding investors that they're gonna be growing uh, on an adjusted basis at approximately 33%. So it's showing that despite all the concerns about privacy changes, iOS, it's not really affecting the company all that much. Um, one thing that I wanted to highlight is here. So you see this graph. So video I've put here includes CTV. Now, for all intents and purposes, they don't really give you this. This is kind of like what I've tried to take away from the earnings call going through. Uh, it's, it's not a hard and fast uh, rule, but it does show that the bulk of its opportunity is coming from video. Video is doing well, but particularly CTV is doing particularly well. And it, CTV is kind of what other people have described as a safe haven because you're able to go over this kind of uh, privacy issue. So by being able to give advertisers a digital way of interacting with the consumer, it's working really, really well. And during the earnings call, they did talk about how particularly um, when people are watching stuff on digital TV, on CTV, the consumer is much more engaged, the retention is higher because ultimately the consumer is seeking out that content, it's on demand, not just watching whatever's in the background, but they've gone purposely sought after watching that content. They've also talked about, which I think will work out quite favorably for um, FUBU, they've also talked about the fact that companies are not felt previously that linear tv was being propped up by uh, live sports and that doesn't seem to be the case from their perspective so obviously the the fubu reports tonight after hours so we're kind of gonna see if that actually unfolds like that but for all intents and purposes ctv looks to be very strong for the traders they say that it's the fastest growing uh, opportunity will even within video so they talk about the majority of, of TV advertising will be programmatic on CTV within the next three years so that's a very bullish statement right there I don't know if that's gonna be the case but it's quite exciting to see nevertheless okay so one of the things I wanted to note is this whole privacy issue so um, they set up this unified ID uh, they call it a unified ID solution 2.0 but essentially they put out this way that they can track users in a privacy free environment so for uh, what they're surprised by is how rapidly other companies outside of the wall gardens of um, Google Facebook Amazon have rapidly adopted a uh, unified uh, ID 2.0 and they talk about how it actually gives the companies more data on the user 
uh, than cookies are ever did. So they're talking about a 20% improvement in the cost per acquisition of the user. So if you have better ROI for the advertisers, that leads the traders to be able to charge more, which is a win-win for all parties. Obviously, they are able to, the trade desk is able to continue taking market share in this digital advertising space. Um, and the trade desk talks that right now we're very much on the cusp of getting one trillion of advertising spend um, globally and that they're still a, a small player here, but it is, they have a lot of opportunity to continue driving forward the programmatic digital advertising space. So it's quite interesting. It's, it's a very interesting um, opportunity for investors. And I know, so people said to me, oh, Michael, 28 times forward sales is not that cheap. Well, I said to you last month, uh, pay 22 times forward sales, and last month everyone was saying it was too expensive. So now it's 28, is it even more expensive? I don't think it is. So here's a few things to think about, right? 28 times next year's revenues, we're already pretty much at the end of 2021. So that's the first thing to think about, right? So you're not, it's not really that expensive. Secondly, think about the fact that they are kind of growing if you if, if you remove the the, the one-off digital spend of last year they're kind of growing at approximately 30 to 35 percent so they're growing faster than the the, the premium that you the, the multiple that you're paying so with that in mind i don't think it's that expensive next think about the fact that it has no debt the highly free cash flow generative the ebitda margins were 41 percent in this quarter right now but they're typically around 39 to 41 percent so it means that it has such a, an ability to from the top line of revenues to drive forward that free cash flow. I think that's really, really exciting. And I don't think that investors are totally nuts. You know, it's a stock that has never really been that cheap. And I think that there's good reasons for that. Um, so I don't own the train desk. Uh, it, this is just for educational purposes. Uh, I do own Tremor and I think the Tremor may do quite well. So this Thursday, Tremor is going to announce uh, their results. I think Tremor will do quite well because Tremor is particularly focused solely on video. Okay. so. Obviously, within video, there's mobile video and there's CTV that they're also exposed to. But I think the Tremor may do quite well in, in, in their results for this quarter. We'll see how that comes out. But if you want to find out what kind of stocks I'm particularly interested in, don't forget to check out my marketplace. It's called Deep Value Returns. Check out what other people have said about my marketplace. Look at the reviews. That's always a good way to get started. And my marketplace is a place to help you become a better investor. Okay, thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye.